the Nikabi Diary Season 1 Illustrated Book is now available in paperback. Own your copy now by clicking the link in the description box. Assalamu alaikum. You're listening to the Nakabi Diary series by The Pen, the sound of sisters raising their voices with the written word. I'm your host Samar and thank you for listening. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh sister, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Alhamdulillah, how are you? Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair for joining us today for By the Pen, the sound of sisters raising their voices with the written word. Sister, could you introduce yourself for the listeners, please, and tell us a little bit about the book that you've written, inshallah. Sure. My name is Leila Goldsmith, and um, I've written a children's book called Bibi's Blessing, which was published by uh, Rukaya's Bookshelf. Mashallah. So when did you release this book, sister? Um, if I remember correctly, I believe it was released in October of 2019. Okay, mashallah. Yeah, it's been around for a little over a year, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Um, and where is the book available? The book is available worldwide, actually. Um, so you can get the book directly from the publisher. Um, I know here in the UK, NFA Gifts, and UK Bookmart sells it, but you know the the publisher's website, rokayasbookshelf.com, has a list of the stockists. Okay. And um, yeah, but you can pretty much get it almost everywhere in the world. Right. So you, the book is um, is a fiction book, right? Yes, it's a it's a picture fiction book. Okay, mashallah. So who is it? Who is it aimed at specifically? Like, what is the? It's for children, but what is the age range? Yeah. So it's aimed at children who are four to eight years old. Okay. Um, but obviously, I mean, I've had people who are grown-ups who read it and they they really love it. Just, you know, read it for their own pleasure. But the target group is four to eight years old. Okay, alhamdulillah. So could you just give us a kind of brief outline of the story? What is it about? Okay. So the book is about this little girl who um, lives in a small island in Kenya called Lamu. Mm -hmm. And um, for those who may not know, Kenya is um, in East Africa. So Lamu is right by the Indian Ocean. And so this girl lives with her grandmother and she helps sell her grandmother's mofa, uh, which is a kind of red native to that island. And so she goes through a series of mishaps and um, uh, things happen that she doesn't particularly, she isn't particularly uh, happy about, but throughout uh, whatever happens, her grandmother keeps on reminding her that there's a blessing in everything. Mm. And so she's just like learning the value of um, seeing the hidden blessings in, in everything throughout the book. So, mashallah. So what would you say your inspiration um was behind this book to write this book what was the inspiration i mean i was inspired by a few things um obviously the grandmother in the book as uh di i was directly inspired by my own grandmother because mm -hmm. my grandmother used to sell uh you know mofa and i actually <laughs> used to help sell it um she, I, sorry my grandmother used to make mofa and i used to help her sell it um so that was directly a story directly inspired by my own life and my very very special relationship with my grandmother who's now deceased um and other things that inspired me were just um uh, you know the the children from the community which i grew up in um they don't I grew up uh, where, you know, we didn't have really good access to books. And I always thought that that was a bit unfair that, you know, everyone else had nice books and we didn't. And everyone else like got to tell exciting stories like Cinderella and Snow White. And we didn't get a, a platform. We didn't have our own books. So, yeah, I just was inspired by also my own childhood and the, and the children who are currently living, uh, living there in Kenya. MashaAllah. So would you say that is something that you've always wanted to do then, write, write um, storybooks for children? 
Not particularly. Um, I, it's funny because I never, even though I was always a voracious reader, like I was const, I was always reading, okay? Like my nose was always inside a book. Um, I always like had such a high reverence for authors. Like, like authors are one of my favorite people. And so, you know, you know, when you look up to someone so much, you kind of feel like um, you're, you really admire them, but you're not in the same, you, you can't possibly do what they can. And so I felt the same way about authors. So I never really intended to write a book growing up. I always had deep admiration for authors. Um, and I, yeah, I, I knew I wanted to do something with books, but I, it just never occurred to me that I would actually write a book. Mashallah. So what, what did you think was kind of, what happened like before you decided to actually took that step to write the book? What, what is it that, what triggered you to actually think, well, actually now I'm gonna write this? Okay, so you remember when I was telling you about the, the fact that books uh, are not really uh, widely available yeah. in, in that part of Kenya. So about, I think seven years ago, I started a community library in, mm -hmm. in Mombasa, which is the second largest city in Kenya. And it's a coastal city and it's the city from the same region from where I grew up in. Yeah. So I started a community library. It's just a, you know, like a small thing. And the whole point was just to bring books so that children could have access to as many books as we could possibly get. And so we used to ship books. We used to, you know, go to car boot sales and buy books, you know, for like 50p and whatnot. Yeah. And um, so we'd take books over um, to, to Kenya, but I was happy, very, very happy that I had the opportunity to do this. But at the same time, I kept on thinking that, wait, like these books are great, but these books don't really reflect the kind of community that I'm serving. Yeah. Um, and so um, it just like was something like really bothered me. Um, so, cause you know, you know, seeing the shelves and you know, the shelves were packed, alhamdulillah. But then I thought like these kids were actually holding these books. They don't really see themselves in these mm. books. So as far as they're concerned, it's just like, you know, a faraway place. Um, these stories are faraway places. And in order to raise readers, you have to make readers um, feel like their stories also have value. So anyway, one time I was uh, sitting having lunch with someone and I was lamenting about this fact that, you know, we don't have, we don't have books that, you know, feature characters from the coast of Kenya and whatever, and why don't we have these? And the lady, I remember just quite just blindly looked at me and she was just like, well, why don't you write one? And uh, it really, <laughs> it really caught me by surprise. Um, and I, because I never considered myself as someone who could possibly write a book. And um, yeah, it took me a little bit of time, but it, the, that seed was planted in me and uh, I decided to pursue it. MashaAllah. You know, to, you know, just you, just hearing that from you, I feel like writing a children's book now. <laughs> it's so much fun. Like, you should, it's you should, it's a big it's deal, I think, you know, representation and especially like, mm -hmm. you know, being like from Africa or, any, or Asian countries, you know, mm -hmm. like what you said makes a lot of sense. You feel you can fill up a library with books, but, you know, especially when you're bringing books from the from the West, like there's no, the representation for the people like that we're serving is not actually in those books you know exactly and they're good they're good references to mm -hmm. that to, to what's happening in other places in the world mm -hmm. but like you know mm -hmm. for your own kind of you know um community like how does that kind of reflect you and how does that help you to how does for the younger generation how would that how would those books help them aspire to to become something or to be thriving in their own communities to to make change to go forward exactly and it's not the representation is a very big issue and this took me a little while to understand mm. but more 
like when you take it up a notch, there's also um, like own voices, you know? So we have books, uh, a few books, not very many, but a few books written uh, about, you know, characters who are based in Kenya, who live in Kenya, but they're written by someone who is not from Kenya. Yeah, so yeah. like I've read a few books and I said, they're not, they're not many at all, but I've read a few books and I'm always like, what, what are they on about? You know, like, that's yeah. not, <laughs> that's not how you pronounce that word or that's, that's not really how things are over there. And so writing, from your own, I'm uh, writing from my own personal experience, really, uh, I feel like it really lends um, a, 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 an edge of authenticity that perhaps maybe other books um, lack, other books that are written by people who are not from Kenya. And I'm not saying that they're wrong in writing those books, but I think I feel like when you write a book and you come from that place, so you know the culture so well, you understand, you know, the language so well intimately, it's just, it's different, you know, it's just, it's different. So I'm very grateful for that. I think it's really important work that you're doing. So can I just ask you a little bit about the library itself? Like, how did you kind of get started with making a, like, you know, you just took it on your, upon yourself to just make a library. How did that work? So my husband and I um, started a community um, group um, to help people out in Mombasa. Um, I come from Lamu, mm -hmm. he comes from Mombasa. They're kind of like uh, the equivalent of like um, La um, London and I am, I don't know, like um, Devon, something like that. So they're, but they're in the same kind of area. So they're all coastal cities. Okay. So anyway, we started this group in Mombasa to just help out um, people there. Um, and then down the line, we, I kind of realized that, you know, books have been so instrumental in my own personal development. And I, feel, I felt like that was something that was really missing from the equation, from everything else that we were doing. And um, I thought, well, why not just start a community library? And so I kind of like put the call out there. And Alhamdulillah, uh, you know, the community rallied around this project. And we just basically uh, rented a flat somewhere um, in one of the neighborhoods and we converted it into a small library. And, you know, one book became two books and became three books. And then before you know it, we had an entire shelf on the wall. And then we had four walls full of shelves, uh, full of books. And Alhamdulillah, it's been going strong. And the one thing that I am particularly proud about our community library is that we are completely community driven. So we don't get any funding from any external organizations that may have um, strings attached in their funding. And I feel like when you build something for your community and the community builds it themselves, there is a sense of ownership that comes yes. with it. Yes. And with that, a sense of empowerment like mm -hmm. no one built this for us we built it ourselves and that's much more sustainable in the long run and people have much more um emotional investment in the project so al alhamdulillah i have mm -hmm. to say it's we've had our fair share of challenges but um we are doing well alhamdulillah and i cannot thank the community enough holding it up. Yeah. Yeah, that is, it's, it's amazing um, it's an amazing idea and an initiative that you started mashallah and may Allah put barakah in it I mean mm -hmm. thank you mashallah. so what would you say the message of your book was well the message of the book is basically you know life is going to throw curveballs at you you may start out 
um, you know, uh, thinking that you, you want something and then things will happen that will prevent you from getting it. You may not get it today. You may not, you may get it tomorrow. You may not ever get it. But the book really is about, you know, us developing that perspective of gratitude. And gratitude is something that is such a major part of my life. So if we can develop a, an attitude for gratitude, then um, we will never feel like we're, you know, deprived or, you know, poor in the spiritual or, or mental sense that there's always something, there's always baraka in whatever you may be going through. We may not realize it now, but at some point we'll look back and we'll say, oh my God, I'm so glad it happened that way as opposed to it happening the way I wanted it to. Mashallah. So can I ask about the book itself? Like, is it available in other languages or is it just like in English or? It's just available in English. Yeah, who knows? Maybe at some point we'll translate it to other languages if uh, there's a demand for that. Okay, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. So what would you say your biggest challenge was um, when writing this book? Um, I think my biggest challenge would be that getting over that mindset. Um, because like I said, um, I never thought that I could be a writer and therefore who, who was I to actually write something that other people would read. Um, and so it's just overcoming that mindset. Uh, and once I did, once I gave myself permission to actually write, um, then it became a very exciting project. Alhamdulillah. And who, who would you say was your biggest supporter? So I, Initially, when I had this idea of writing the book, um, I enrolled in um, Naima Roberts's. I don't know if you. Yes, mashallah, of course. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Yeah, mashallah. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Uh, so she had like a, a Muslim, uh, Muslim something. Yeah, Muslim writers boot camp. And so she had started off with like a two day or three day workshop, a virtual workshop featuring different Muslim writers across the world. And so I attended it just out of curiosity. And then I thought, wow, all these people like wrote. So, all right, well, maybe I can too. <laughs> and so she had this um, Muslim writers uh, boot camp, and I signed up for it and Alhamdulillah that was very a very positive experience for me um so it really helped me to get over the um the i can't do it mindset and yeah alhamdulillah and I, once i submitted the manuscript to my publisher um Rukaya's bookshelf um they i mean they were so so incredibly supportive in developing the story um asma and Kajra were just amazing so i'm very very grateful to them I, i'm pretty sure the first draft was uh, the first draft <laughs> was a really horrible one but they took it and they and they, they really helped me um turn it into <clears throat> something that that's powerful Alhamdulillah. so um what would you advise other sisters who feel that you know they want to write a book as well but they don't think that they're a writer or an author I would, uh, what I would say is that I really believe that each and every single one of us has a story inside of us and that it's our obligation to write it. So at some point, it stops really being about you, but you are just like the, the vessel that was chosen to, uh, you know, to, um, to tell this story. So it's not about you, it's about something much greater than you. It's about um, God um, inspiring you. And so just do it, you know, just do it. And you, the first draft will always be a very, very terrible draft. <laughs> You're probably going to look back on it and really hate it, but that's okay. That's why you have editors, you have proofreaders, you have writing coaches. But just be faithful 
to the story that's within you and get it on paper, whatever it is, whatever form it takes, um, get it down. And yeah, the, the rest comes, the polishing comes later. Alhamdulillah. So do you have any other books, um, you know, kind of in the framework at the moment? Are you planning on writing any more stories like this? Uh, yes, I am. I am. I'm, I have a few that are in the works. So um, hopefully um, with, you know, with COVID, COVID has really slowed down a lot of things, but hopefully sometime this year I'll, I'll release um, a few more, inshallah. 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 Jazakallah for joining us today. Um, so you said your book is available worldwide. Is it on Amazon as well? I know it's on Amazon here um, and in the US. I'm not so sure because um, it must be like a, a retailer put some copies on Amazon. Mm -hmm. But yeah, just check on Amazon in the UK and the US. I'm pretty sure they should be available there. Uh, if not, they're um, also available on my publisher's website at rukayasbookshelf.com and um, they ship worldwide. Okay, inshallah. We'll, we'll put the links for, um, you know, in the description so that, you know, the listeners, inshallah, if they're interested in purchasing this book, they can easily access it, inshallah. Jazakallah khair, sister. Thank you so much for joining us today. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.